Should another team focus on the development of Halo Infinite? More customization freedom happening within Season 2? And equipment removed from Last Spartan Sandy? Well, I answer your questions and a lot more within this video. So stay tuned throughout the whole thing to understand all the details. How's it going everybody? Kevin here once again doing our Q&A video from you guys right here. If you guys don't know, I'd like to go onto my community page here and ask you guys questions about Halo Infinite stuff and anything Halo gaming related. But oftentimes I go onto my community page, I reach out to you guys if you have any questions or answers that you'd like to have for a potential topic on another video. And well, you guys certainly like to respond a lot to these things. So I reached out and grabbed a few more comments out of the last Q&A session that I did. So if you want to catch the next Q&A availability, make sure you subscribe to the channel guys to catch those posts when they do go live. First question here is from Harv. And he asked, what are your thoughts on the future of 343 as a development team for Halo after a decade with the franchise? In my opinion, they've never got anywhere close to where Halo should be. Do you think they could get the ax and let maybe Bethesda or Activision Blizzard team work on the series? Now that is a very interesting point of view on that one um i was ultimately i never see 343 being removed i can see maybe a rebranding or something like that uh but 343 was specifically created by microsoft to continue the halo ip so if there's any kind of issues with 343 it's more of the people rather than the company themselves so i would chalk this up to more like a upper management middle management kind of issue when it comes to halo carrying on the legacy of what halo has to offer for the franchise so what i mean by that is saying that we would be more likely to see bonnie ross step down rather than 343 completely removed obviously there are some bad connotations behind the branding of 343 maybe if bonnie, bonnie ross ever steps down and we have a whole new like upper management change they might rebrand it to like i don't know or 34 industries or something like that with a whole new team that kind of promote that kind of aspect to it. Though with the recent acquisition of Activision Blizzard, as well on top of the Bethesda teams, which I don't really expect Microsoft to really kind of delve too much into their development cycles because they kind of have their own ecosystem, their own cultures of work status and stuff like that. Uh, though I could see like if things get really tight and really tough when it comes to development of certain games, we could see maybe some talent from those other companies working on different development cycles for different games. For example, I know that they use some talent from the Coalition, which is the Microsoft created studio to continue on the Gears series work on Halo Infinite as well which we covered previously on the channel. So could we see like Raven Studios or Treyarch Infinity Ward or Sledgehammer Games be the new developers for Halo? I don't really expect to see that happen. Especially since we haven't really heard much news about Bethesda and Zenimax teams working on other Halo products or Microsoft games for that fact. They've kind of just like their own little ecosystem but they're just under the umbrella of Microsoft. I think those acquisitions are more just to try to boost up the sales of like game pass and get more hype about the microsoft brand as a whole for gaming to get people on their platform playing those games rather than people being on sony's platform or ubisoft's platform ea's platform and things like that now quick word from today's sponsor ridge wallet Ridge recently reached out to me to ask me if I want to check out their product and so far I've tried it out and honestly guys I'm actually really enjoying this. Essentially what this is it holds all your cards and your cash as well but in a much smaller compact and also more secure way. Now I had that traditional chunky leather wallet for the longest period of time and honestly it felt kind of awkward to hold at some point just because it was so bulky but once I was able to limit the size of that wallet down to just this with all my cards and cash on hand like I don't think I can ever go back. You know when you do that traditional check of like phone, keys, wallet. Well, so many times I reach for the wallet part and I'm like, oh gosh, did I forget it? I'm like, no, it's just Ridge. It's just that thin and compact and that easy to carry around. Ridge also has different types of styles you can have with your wallet as well and different types of products on top of that. They also have really great security along with just like ease of function and just overall just like a better product than you would normally expect out of just a simple product like a wallet or anything else. Now the reason why I mentioned security is because the Ridge wallet comes with an RFID blocker as well to stop you from any digital pit pocketers. So if you're interested in checking out Ridge Wallet, which I highly suggest you should check them out guys. Honestly, it's great stuff. You can use my link in the description and in the pinned comment down below to get yourself 15% off when you use the code KevinCoolX at checkout. So thank you Ridge Wallet for sponsoring this video. Let's get right back into the content here. 
Pringles Good asked, will Halo Infinite have the team bundle colors be freely customizable like adding armor, chest plate, and helmets? This is something I was certainly bummed out about when we first got these op options for customization when it comes to these team bundles because they look pretty cool. Like, not gonna lie, I bought a couple myself. I bought the Optic one in Season 1. Season 2, I bought the Phase Bundle, but you can't really customize them a whole lot. Though, in Season 2 with the Team Bundles, you actually can customize your Warthog vehicles with different attachments and the skins stay on them, which is really nice. Though the problem is, that's not the same for the Assault Rifle. With the Assault Rifle, you add a Weapon Charm on top of it, it reverts back to your normal coating. So that's really weird where it comes with the bundle, but you can't wear it with the bundle. It's odd stuff like that. And the same thing happened with Season 1 coatings as well when it comes to the armor customization where you have to have that kit right there. You can't modify it whatsoever. Uh, you have to have that exact armor set with these exact colors. Uh, if you try doing different armor sets or different attachments even, doesn't work. Though, good news is that's looking to change very soon within this season. The head of HS Tashi tweeted this out back in February saying regarding the kits, talking about the armor coatings and different bundles, in talks with Jerry Hookwell, who's no longer with the team, but I'm sure these plans are still in motion, uh, we are definitely agree that we don't want them to be as restrictive as they are today, talking about the coatings for the HS bundles. And the team is working on an elegant solution for the future and will share more when we can. Goal is to offer the uniform, but also give some freedom. Now, when Tashi says uniform, is that just like the coating itself? But I'm assuming the uniform is the coating and armor put together, though we could possibly see some additional fixes and changes happening. As in, you probably would be able to maybe add like those uh, equipment parts on the side of the hip of the character or a chest piece or like a helmet attachment or something like that I could totally see that being an availability for this uniform that they keep talking about personally I would just like to have the coating and then be able to put that on different armor sets however you like though I can understand how you want to have that kind of uniform look to the bundles so it's kind of understandable I really like what you're doing to me right now heck of a name by the way says what are your thoughts on the game having abilities on last Spartan standing do you think it's fair or that they should remove it due to the game dragging and potentially encouraging camping behavior? I definitely do feel that there are some significant changes that need to happen to last Spartan standing for it to be like a truly fun mode. Like it's fun right now, but there certainly are flaws with it that could definitely see some improvements, definitely along the lines of equipment. Now we did see one change with the equipment where now it's not just overshield and camo. They've mixed up with just a whole sandbox of different bits of equipment. I really like that change. Though the, my biggest issues really are, if you mean by abilities as in probably more equipment and stuff like that, uh, I definitely do not like overshield in the game since most of your gunfights are going to be one-on-one -on -one battles when it comes to last Spartan standing. So then you can't really like gang up on the guy because like they're so isolated in the gunfights that like it's almost like playing octagon right but then the other guy has overshield like you're going to lose that fight every single time obviously there is a little bit of random chance and you know i have the better thing than you kind of stuff that plays into the factors of last spartan standing ultimately it is kind of a miniature battle royale social mode i wouldn't take it super serious uh, though I do would like to see Overshield removed. I like camo being in there though, because you're still very vulnerable if you have camo. You need to make the right place if you're going to utilize it properly. And when it comes to camping, I think it's more just kind of the nature of the beast of this type of game mode where people play much more defensive because they have a limited amount of lives where you're really punished for dying. So it just kind of depends. Are you going for the win or are you playing for kills kind of thing? And there's two different ways to play about it. So there's a nice little mix of gameplay mixed in with the whole thing as well. Uh, again, like I think it's just kind of a nature of the beast when it comes to the camping side of things. Uh, but Overshield, I think, definitely needs to see the boot when it comes to the sandbox elements put into Halo Infinite's mode. The Serb Zilla asks, is there anything specific you're looking forward to with Forge? And is there something you want to see new that hasn't been in any Forge mode in the past? Well, I think the easy one on that one would be AI or at least uh, bots within a forge mode, which we kind of already have in a moment. But I think what I mean by AI as in the banished AI being involved with it, I think it'd be really cool. But it only would be cool 
if you could craft like your own kind of campaign missions kind of stuff which i think is certainly doable within forge from what we know of right now we i have all i've heard about forge when it comes to halo infinite from the people who are part of the forge council that this is going to be the best forge mode we've ever had within the game the franchise as a whole which is really awesome to hear but what makes it really awesome i think if you're able to forge up your own campaign style missions and so you can download them and play them and stuff like that would be really freaking cool i can see some really fun creations when it comes to like atmosphere and stuff like that like we've seen what people were able to do with Halo 5's Forge and creating these amazing environments we can see that kind of creation when it comes to like the Forge content but you also can see like you know how Mario Map Maker right has like these incredibly difficult levels that you have to be like a legend at Mario to be able to get down we could see the same kind of thing but for Halo right these incredibly difficult like user made campaign missions essentially uh, to be part of like the experience but like that would be some amazing content to play around with so something like that is what i would love to see uh for a very specific type of feature maybe like a terrain editor because previously it's just been different pieces you kind of just put together and molded to to where you just kind of like overlay on top of each other which is you know the forces have done a very good job of making it look natural but it's not as natural just being able to just like to take the flat ground right and just kind of lift it up however you would like that's my that's my Forge lifting up animation right there. We saw this possible within Far Cry 5, I believe it was Far Cry 5 or Far Cry 4's map editor that, that they had, that you could just edit the terrain, kind of lift it up and down, and you can texture it however you want with like a brush kind of stuff. I would love to see that part as well involved with the Forge creations. Since Forge really kind of, you know, brought map editing and map creation to console for the first time, it's always been the best version, but really like Far Cry 5's map editor really stepped it up. Actually, it probably is like the best console front facing map editor I've ever seen. And uh, for Halo not to hold that title for best map editor, I feel like it's not very Halo-like. Malap Atchu, if I pronounce that correctly, asks, has FIFA 3 mentioned anything regarding plans to add more ranked playlists? Now, the closest we've gotten to additions to ranked playlists was when we first heard the announcement from Tashi that uh, the map Catalyst and King of the Hill are being added to the ranked mode and experience, which is great. Fun at being able to play around quite a bit. It's actually really great additions. I love these maps and also modes. But people want more ranked experiences as we've had previously in Halo, like your ranked Team Slayer, ranked SWAT. Uh, I think I've seen like ranked snipers before and stuff like that, though I personally don't want to see that. And the reason why is because Halo's ranked experience has always been much more niche than any kind of a social experience, right? Like in Halo 5, we had ranked Slayer and social Slayer, but social Slayer was much more played than ranked Slayer. But ranked experiences throughout all first person shooter games, it's always going to be a much more niche version of the core experience of that game. Unless that game is like Counter-Strike, but that game has been fundamentally built from the ground up to be a competitive experience. Though if we were to add an additional ranked playlist i would like to see free for all ranked version be thrown into the game not just because uh people want ranked free for all but i think frank free for all is also a great spot for up and coming players who want to get involved with the pro scene free for all is often a spot where they kind of start making a name for themselves and every hcs tournament that we've had so far has had a you know, open bracket free for all to play along on alongside of the main experience of the 4 4 tournaments. So, how are you supposed to get that free for all practice without a playlist to get that free for all practice in unless you're just doing custom games with community members? But if you're new to the channel, miss any content from me recently, check out this playlist right here. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Greatly appreciate it. Catch you all in the next one. Peace out.